Don, thanks for agreeing to do this interview. Yeah. Um, it's just going to be some really simple questions. Um, if, if there's any you're not comfortable with answering for any reason, I, I'm more than happy for you just to say it, that. That's. Not I will me. tell you, and furthermore, what I'm going to say on the answers, I don't want you to change it. Okay. Unless you um, contact me or something like this, yeah? Because um, I'm talking about an area a lot of people don't necessarily know about. Well, it's ex- exactly the angle that I'm coming from, Dawn. So it's, um, you know, it's. it's <laughs> I, I, I mean, bear in mind, I'm, I'm 38, so I just about missed the, the, the Scar era. Uh, and I, like I said, and obviously the 60s reggae is, is, no, is something I completely missed. No, no. It's, it, they try to put it on a date and say the 60s. It's yeah. actually sometimes you had people like Jimmy Cliff and these people, Millie Swan and these people singing from before I was singing. And I, a recording of me happened in 1966. I wasn't even sure. It, I didn't know I was being recorded. So that is the first song when I'm going to be free. You don't love me. No, no, no. It's not my first track. Right. Yeah? So what, 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 what was the first thing that you ever did? Huh? What, what was the... I said... The first record that came out, I didn't. It didn't come up because I didn't even know I was being recorded until sometime later, about eleven, twelve years ago. I discovered something was on YouTube, not YouTube, um, Amazon on auction as a rare track by me called "When I'm Gonna Be Free." I never had a copy or anything. What? How, I didn't know I was being taped. How did that happen? How, I didn't how did go you into the that studio. They- how did how did that happen? Yeah. I told you how I found out. I found out about eleven years ago when someone told me that some tune that I have or that I sung was an option on on um the net. Wow. As a rear track by me. How did you feel about that? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Well there's nothing to feel about. I just was told. Yeah, I don't have no feeling about it. I just you know, I just thought it was abuse, really. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dawn, tell me, what was it like recording and, and making music in Jamaica back in, in that magical era, uh, in, in the 60s? Okay, it's people in magical era. Um, How was it? It's just like, well, you used to go, I did like today you'd have gone to some studio and we usually, people usually go to Coxon for audition and voice their song and he would tell him I'd come back next week, next month uh, when he's gone, away. <laughs> he needs to tell some people come next week he won't be in. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think that music keeper, but he was a very good man still. He wanted to put up people and make them, you know, give them a chance. What was it? It's just about singing with, with um, recording with a proper band, you know, instruments. You're hearing them, you're seeing the people playing them and things like that. You know, you had to pass through the rigorous test of seeing a song and they approve or disapprove it. That's what it was. Wait, were you surprised when... Am I not answering the question? Oh, sorry, go on. Am I not answering your question? You, you... If I'm not answering it, tell me as well, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm out here in the cool. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Was uh, I not surprised, Rock? Well? Yeah, I, I, were you surprised when, when the rock steady material from the 60s became such a big hit on, on the ska scene in, in, in the 80s and then again in, in sort of 94? Rock steady started around 1969, 1970, kind of time. It was their first shot while, yeah, like Hope and Lewis, yeah, the. Um, Alton Ellis and these people. What was it like? Or what do you say was what? What was we, it? We we were surprised when 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 it was kind of resurrected in in, in Britain in, in the early eighties and, and and again in, in the mid. Well, I didn't I didn't know of uh, asking in a funny way, but um, what it is, I recorded. You don't love me, no, no, no. After doing songs for people like Prince Buster, some four songs, and went to Duke Reed and then circle around back to um, Coxney and recorded You Don't Love Me, No, No, No. And you say in the 80s now, mm. I was in another country when that was going on. They were doing dance hall. And that's when the song surged, resurged. You Don't Love Me, No, No, No is a rock steady song. And it resurged um, 
actually, Studio One had a 35-year anniversary. Yeah? yeah? And that is what um, Boost Heartbeat saying they want to do an album with Steel and Cleave. Go Rock City, the title of the album. And that's how the song came back around. Uh, my song was running the album, so I had to put it on a 7-inch. And that's how I got my deal with Atlantic as well. Some Basil Marshall person from RCA Victor came to the house and um, said he was talking to Atlantic about the deal. And that's how that happened. Studio One, 35 year anniversary. Uh, studio, studio One, uh, uh, could, you, could you just explain a little bit about Studio One to anybody maybe not, not familiar with that label? Studio One is just a local label in Kingston, somewhere around Brentford Road. 13 Brentford Road, um, very close to RGR on Retirement Road, Retirement Crescent, kind of crossroads, a half crossroads area. Um, anybody who is, everybody used to go to Cox. We had a lot of people there just hanging out, people not even doing anything, just coming with their friends. At least I went there with some of my friends as well. Um, one Sunday and voice a song and, um, had the pleasure of Jackie to audition in me and we worked across getting the music together for the track. The one that you know today as You Don't Love Me. No, no, no. The song. So on that note, what can you remember and what what was significant about things like the the fashion in in that era in, in the late sixties in in Jamaica? Because we we sort of adopted the uh, the the rude boy, um, you know, like the, the the suit and tie, especially with the you know with with the men, but as well the the women's fashion in that era. Every ten years, the same fashion come around in a different mode. I mean. The colors keep changing, you know, they focus on this color a lot. One time it was hot pink, now it is they're trying to use every possible color that there is in the rainbow to put into clothes and use different designs. I mean, we used to do designs using potato, drawing them and, and using um, paint, putting on the potato and pressing it on different types of material to make um, designs, you know. So... Um, Every, every 10 years, it comes back around just like the music, <laughs> to be honest. Am I making sense? Yes, yes. Uh, you, 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 <laughs> you, just moving on slightly, you, you mentioned it a little bit earlier. You famously quit music in the 70s. What made you stop and what made you come back? I, I, never, I never stopped anywhere here. I was always singing. I don't know where people get this idea from. I went to talk to all of the British Virgin Islands around 1972 to check out my route on my dad's side. We did not know the man was born in Tartol of the British Virgin Islands all the time. And when we discovered it, and one of my cousins from Tartola called me, and I was working at the Jamaica Telephone Company at the time, I just was at my job and went to stay with my dad for a while because my sister was within one of them and she had to come back to school. And I had just started this job with the Jamaica Telephone Company for a couple of months, and I just took the job and left. Uh, check out my route. Yeah. And I stayed there for about when, 17 years. And by the time I came back, there was a thing named Dance Hall in play. Mm. It turns out that um, this is where Steel and Cleveland did the 35 year anniversary thing. I was such a person of one of my who was. The person still head in the studio one thirty five year anniversary and we did an album at Dunbar Avenue, Humphrey Tree and like I said, my track was running the album. It's a lot of people on the album as well. Then we with Martha Griffith, um, Dabby Dabson, Alton Ellis, Without the Flame, and a whole bunch of people and my track was running the album and the Sorry, Dom, we're just losing the signal slightly. Yeah. Oh, I, can, I, can, I, can, I can hear you now. Okay. Is it quite windy where, where you are? Um, There's a nice cool breeze blowing, but I'm in the cool as well. Ah, so right. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, now, you're still quite prolific in, in recording and making new music. You had a, an album out in 2015, Chilling. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your current album, please? No, I don't have an album, I don't have an album called Chilling, yes? Yeah. The album, I have a single called Chilling, 
from an album called You Don't Love Me, um, Never Hustling the Music. I have eight albums, yes? Yeah. Eight, not one song, right. So after you had um, the No, No, No album with Help Market, You Don't Love Me, No, 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 the single which got nominated for a Grammy back in 1994, I did another album called Come Again, which I co-produced with somebody called Delroy Williams, Ex, ex manager of Desmond Becker, yeah. and then um, it went to the vintage music music that I did before I left Jamaica in 1970, and um, around 1968 to 1970, and I put them on a vintage album, vintage album one, and then after I did that, I discovered that there are a lot more songs that I didn't have, so I made it vintage two. So after that, you had um, a conscious album with conscious music, not totally gospel. Then you had um, one called Never Hustle the Music, which was done back in 2003 in America with John Forty of the Fugees and, you know, different other people on the album Charlemagne. Um, Vidal Gorin and people from Coffee Camp, um, and um, Commissioner Gordon, who does Jill Scott, Donald Jones, um, and all these different people coming to out, outside of America as a top, top of the line producer. And that album is what Chilling comes from. The video was only done last year as well in Jamaica. Ah. That's the album I'm promoting at this moment in time. Um, I released, let me see, I released Never Hustle the Music, the title track from the album Never Hustle the Music. Um, what You Gonna Do, which is another song with John Ford and myself and Estere, who was signed to Warner Brothers. And um, Chilling. And I've got one called You and Me. I've just done a video in Mexico from the track You and Me, which I really have received up to this hour and is going to be looking at it by tomorrow to check out. Yeah. If it meets requirements and put it up on the YouTube. That's yeah. the fourth album from fourth, fourth track from the album, Never Ask the Music. Brilliant. Uh, but uh, when when you look at your career, um what what is the one thing that you feel the most proud of? Well, I feel proud of quite a few little things, you know. Um, one of them was getting the Martin Luther King Award in New York. Um, being recommended for a Grammy back in 1994. Um, that I was signed to Atlantic. I had an APID, but it didn't work out like that anyway. And one of them was really the highlight of Grace in the DC 13th Award. Um, scenario in Los Angeles alongside um, um, what are, these two guys from New York at 97, Bobby Connors and Jabba, some people I knew while I was actually living there. So it was quite um, exciting actually to meet the who is who in the music on a one-to-one -one basis in LA for that show. Uh, what when you were sorry? Oh, sorry. Uh, when when you were growing up uh, and, and and kind of just getting into music, what what was what were your influences? What what was the music that you grew up on? When I was growing up, when I was growing up, only two things I could have done is to go to the music class and go to the church because that's how my parents had us locked or guys on a Monday evening. Now the people. I was listening to at the time was like Dion Warwick, one of my favorite artists from those times, Aretha Franklin, Gladys Knight, and even Patti LaBelle, and her group, the Patti LaBelle and the Patti LaBelle and the Bluebells. But on her own, she was a star of that group anyway. So those were the, the pink people. You had other gospel people because you only could play gospel in the house anyway. When my father wasn't there, we, was was there, we couldn't do it. So that was what it was. Mahalia Jackson and people like that. 
I was doing classical music. I'm a musician, you know. Yeah. People don't really know. They haven't seen me play a keyboard for a while, but I do play the keyboards as well. Uh, final and question. F- final question for you, Dawn. Um, when basically you're, you're on the festival circuit quite a bit this summer, I've noticed you're, you're on a few little bits, um, but as well on on the uh, the Our Scar Festival on twentieth of August. Um, when you're not on stage yourself, who do you really enjoy watching? Um, I don't really go like that, you know, because. I have the concept that if I keep popping up in people's faces without doing a show, when the time comes for them to pay big money, they won't turn up. So I don't really go out like that. But um, I have seen a few. I was at um, the Birmingham, um, what you call that place now? The Birmingham place. As the NAC? Studio. It's not a studio. Yeah. B, what do you call it? BCIC? I think so, yeah. Anyway, this yeah, that place. Um, I watch oh my goodness. Oh my lord. But my cousin was playing as well, he was backing her up on right. keyboard, so he invited me to come and have a come and see her. Um so I can't remember it's so much people to remember me in. Um, yes, but um you ask me who do I enjoy? I don't really go like go out. I have a lot of shows that I do. So I'm basically busy most of the time. I had a live show or PA on the road, you know? Mm. I'm trying to remember the lady name. <laughs> I can't believe. She won the X Factor one of the time. No, it's, it's funny how I can't remember. And she's the lady in front of me. I, mean, I think it begins with B. She, um, oh my goodness. I think she is kind of extract from Jamaica, as well, you know. Um, but um, is it Leona Lewis? Like no. Yes, yeah. Leona Lewis. I don't know. I couldn't remember who my name. <laughs> LL. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm seeing her in front of me, you know, because I went to her thing and I was in the top, just watching everything that she did. Her show was just like. You know, she sang and some people back her up and then there was this video thing of her life growing up, da 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 and things like that. It was quite interesting. But um sometimes, you know, like if I hear that a Tina Turner is coming to town, I would rush or um some slap people from Jamaica came to Ronnie's place and I went there to see them as they were just playing the band. They were playing in a band. And I just went in to see them. Mm. But um, you have a lot of people. I was trying to see Mr. George Benson. Because oh, yeah. I had a little link with him one time. And he just left that same place this month, two weeks now. And then she was there, I think, last week. I was actually, I was even planning to go to see Jim Scott last night. <laughs> in Street, but that's a big place. And I think that place that they were keeping it maybe is across from a train station. But I didn't exactly have the name. So I didn't think, but I would have liked to see her still, because mm. you know I know the people who do her music, um, master her music and things like that in New Jersey. So that's what's up. Don, thank you very much for your time, uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing you live on the 20th of August at uh, Boulder's Exhibition Centre. Okay, thanks for your time and thanks for having me as well. Thank, okay. Thanks, Don. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. <laughs>